Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and yes, today we are doing a red spot makeup tutorial from the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark books and movie. If you'd like to see how this look is executed, keep on watching. Okay, before we even get this tutorial started, I am like shaking, shaking. So we all know obviously from the thumbnail, the title, and the intro that this is a tutorial on the red spot, which is a story from the Scary Stories trilogy, and that it involves spiders. But the weird part of this is, is as I was setting everything up to come sit down and film, I looked down on the floor and I screamed freaking bloody murder and then I had to go get a mason jar because this was on my floor. Oh, you don't understand the level of hell to the no that this put me through. He's freaking huge, and he's like brown and has stripes, and he's missing like two legs. He's a six-legged spider instead of an eight-legged spider. I don't know, but <gasps> let's get started. I'm starting off with a clean face where I want to put my red spot, and I'm just taking this clear eyelash case, and I'm going to be using that to mix my third degree. If you don't know what third degree is, it is a silicone modeling agent that is used to make prosthetics in special effects makeup. It comes in two jars, an A and a B jar, and when you mix the two together, you get silicone. I'm taking my A jar and a metal spatula, and I'm just scooping out a little bit. You don't need a ton because this product goes a long way. Now moving on to your B jar, it's very important to remember you cannot use the same end of the spatula that you put in the A jar. What'll happen is you will make your product react and the entire batch will be ruined. And this stuff's pretty pricey, so you definitely don't want to ruin it. Once you have it on your tray or your palette, go ahead and just mix it together. It doesn't take long for this stuff to start reacting and you want to work with it pretty quickly. The key to using third degree is you wanna start off slow and you wanna start off little. This stuff is meant to build. And what that means is it's going to start solidifying as you're working. So it's better to put a little bit, manipulate it how you want, let it solidify, and then add more and make sure you're smoothing down your edges. The key is making it look like it blends in with your face. There's no right or wrong way to use third degree when it comes to building your prosthetic. Just do whatever you feel is right. You're the artist. And once it's dry, or starting to dry, you can maneuver it even more. So what I'm doing is I'm just roughing it up, I'm opening up the center, sort of making like a little crater where I want my spiders to come from. And I like my prosthetics to look rough, so I'm definitely going to make it look rough. But you can do whatever you want. So now that it's dry, it'll feel not tacky, but you'll know it's dry. Take some translucent powder to set it, and this is going to help with your foundation. You can use whatever translucent powder you want. I'm just using Airspun, and yeah, don't get it in your face like I did. So I'm just taking my regular foundation that I use and my concealer. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply my makeup as usual. And for this, I'm using my Morphe sponge. And I'm avoiding my prosthetic at the moment. I'm not going to be using my sponge on it. 
Instead, I'm going to be using a little brush. It just helps getting in with to the nooks and crannies better. And I just don't want the pressure of my sponge to do anything to my prosthetic. So now I'm going in with my concealer. And I'm just going to be applying that like I always do. And to blend, I'm using my Jeffree Star X Morphe sponges. And I'm setting it with my Jeffree Star setting powder in the shade Topaz. And now the fun part. It's time to color. And for that, I'm using my CC Beauty Flash Palette. I'm going to go in with red, black, and brown. I'm starting off with black, and I'm focusing on the center of the red spot. Because the more black you add, the more depth it gives. And I definitely want my red spot to look deep. And then I'm going along the edges with red to give it a little bit of an irritation look. And then I'm just going to take a stippling sponge and go around the entire prosthetic with the red. I want it around my skin, around the silicone. I want this thing to look like it's very irritated. And now I'm just taking a detailing brush and I'm going around with more of the red. And I'm just doing detailing work at this point. I put some green on the tip of my finger and I'm going to place it around the edges of the prosthetic because I want to give it sort of a bruising effect and to do that you want to go in with greens and yellows looking pretty gross and now to the spiders I got these spiders from a Halloween store and I'm pretty sure you can get them at any store that sells Halloween decorations around this time. And that's what they look like. Just little plastic spiders. We're going to be adhering them to our face with lash glue. This spider was pretty tough to stay on, and I figured out it was because the legs are too long. So for the rest of the spiders, I trimmed their legs down to help them stick better, and it worked amazingly. So if you end up getting these spiders, Definitely take a pair of scissors and make their legs a bit shorter. And you should have something like this. And I'm just going to take my Fresh Kill Special Effects Blood and a nice little detailing brush and we're just going to get some blood in there. Bloody it up. There we go. That looks better. And I'm going to put on my pink lipstick, just like how Ruth had on in the movie. And this is my Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lipstick in Watermelon Soda. And that's pretty much your finished look, you guys. I'm glad that everyone stayed and watched this awesome video. Go ahead and make some scary faces. Pretend to scream. I mean, good thing I'm not an actor, right? Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you in my next video.